A Sound of Thunder, 2005, directed by Peter Hyams, starring Edward Burns, Catherine McCormick, and Sir Ben Kingsley. Someone from the near future accidentally alters the timeline during a prehistoric safari. Can the timeline be repaired, or will our existence be history? This is a film I was shocked I'd never heard of until recently. I was actually looking at Game Boy Advance titles and saw that a tie-in game had been made for it, which got me curious. It comes from that awkward period where they were finally starting to embrace digital effects in the film industry. The early 2000s. It's not bad, it's just off. They weren't quite where they needed to be with it yet. What's fascinating is this film deals with time travel as a business venture, as opposed to a plot device, which is a refreshing change of pace for a subgenre of sci-fi I feel is pretty underutilized. The cast is perfectly adequate in their roles. No one really stands out aside from Sir Ben Kingsley's hair in this film. This was a scrappy production. The scenes really show at times. The CG isn't stellar. The green screen isn't the most convincing. And there's even awkward instances of bad ADR dubbing in a couple of scenes. That being said, research revealed that this film went through a very turbulent production process which included the studio going bankrupt. It's a miracle this film saw the light of day at all. I feel like many people criticizing the visuals forget how clunky digital effects were in the 2000s in general. Even big budget films like the Star Wars prequels, The Mummy Returns, and The Matrix Reloaded had their awkward visuals. There's a couple of anachronistic errors in this film, which I was able to suspend my disbelief on, except for one thing. The film establishes that the timeline is gradually altered in waves, as opposed to the entire timeline being altered simultaneously as you'd normally expect. There's literally no way to explain this outside of because the plot needed it to be this way. The best you get is a brief exposition scene. This film is based on a short story of the same name by iconic sci-fi author Ray Bradbury. Director Peter Hyams is no stranger to sci-fi or horror either, having directed Capricorn 1, 2010, The Year We Make Contact, Time Cop, End of Days, and The Relic. Takes place in a future Chicago. Always happy to see my city in a movie, even if it's being destroyed by a rift in the space-time continuum. There's some wonderfully nightmarish alternate timeline creatures as well, including reptilian baboons, giant bats, and basically a dragon eel. Verdict recommended. Make some time to check this film out. That concludes this week's review. If there's any obscure sci-fi or horror film you'd like to suggest, feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure to tune in next time for another thrilling, low-budget adventure.